Good night, everybody, to all the audience of uh, Galei Yerushalayim. My name is Daniel Asso. I'm, um, we, we're going to have here a new radio program, um, and we'll, we'll discuss theology uh, a little bit because we, we will try to target mainly uh, the students, uh, the Jewish students, that, um, to prepare them. Um, for the high education at universities and uh, colleges, and we will try to uh, avoid um, uh, missionaries uh, trying to catch our own uh, Jew students by preparing them a little bit uh, with um, um, discussion about the issue that usually missionaries discuss. Um, I will tell you this time my uh, own personal story and why I feel that uh, it's it's a very important mission. And uh, and I'll tell you an ashgacha story about my own self. Um, so we'll get to know uh, um, me, and uh, then for the next time I will start with. Uh, with the issues that we need to prepare our own uh, kids, children, um, uh, students, uh, because obviously living among a population where uh, the other culture is uh, Christianity, it's, uh, it's almost unavoidable to uh, confront uh, such an issue at uh, the colleges, universities, campuses, especially where the evangelist people um, that believe in, in their own beliefs are targeting us as a, um, and, and finding our Jewish nation uh, the most important um, people to preach the gospel. So therefore, we will discuss it, but first of all, I will start with my own personal story, as I, as I told you. Uh, it's I'm I'm basically um, here um, living in Jerusalem, and for me it's a morning. For you, it's a Motzei Shabbos night. Um, I would like to start where I was an officer in the fifty-one unit in Golani. The year was eighty-six, and I was um, keeping the border in, between Israel and Lebanon. And then I got a command to come to my officer in Metula and to discuss a very important issue with him. And as I arrived to Metula, I, I was explained that I'm I have to pack my my old stuff and my old combat uh, material and uh, matter and and then. To the, I'm, I'm going to be transferred to another place in the in the army. I wasn't sure why, and I asked whether I've done something wrong. But I, I was told by my officer that um, that's not a problem. That's uh, that he can even give me a recommendation. I was a very good officer. It's just that um, he got a very high level uh, a command that coming from from very uh, upper level um that i have to leave the unit 51 and of golani and to re be removed to another place so i i couldn't really believe to what i'm hearing but i had to do what i have to do i took uh, the jeep and i drove back I started to pack my stuff, and my soldiers started to ask me many questions. Why? Why are you doing it? Where? Why are you leaving us? And I told them, you know, I have no other choice. Uh, that's the command that I got from the army, and I'm living. I don't know where, to where. And I was removed to, surprisingly, to uh, the Air Force. Why to the Air Force? I didn't know what am I supposed to do there, but I, as I was removed to the Air Force, I was explained that the um, 
pilot cadets needed to be uh, taught how to navigate, how to uh, parachute, how to, to fight, many, many other things that they need to be trained for. And we, few officers that, that um, the Air Force pulled out from the Army, um, needed to be trained first and then to be prepared to deliver uh, the flying courses um, in, in, the, in, the, in, in the Air Force, so in the flying school. So we started to be trained and uh, they taught us how to choose who uh, should be a pilot and who is um, uh, more, um, what's the characteristic needed to be a pilot. And um, then I uh, started, we started the course, the year was 87, and the beginning of 87, and then all of a sudden, and we were, we, in advance, our officers there that prepared us for the course, um, the flying course, uh, they told us we cannot stop the 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 the, the music. That's the melody. That's a music that shouldn't be stopped. Uh, we have to prepare more and more pilot cadets because uh, the control over the sky of the Middle East it's uh, the most important thing to win a war uh, in the Middle East. So therefore, we, we cannot stop the flying courses. We have to go on and on and on. But surprisingly, the first course that I was, um, was um, delivering was uh, 118. The first course was stopped in the middle. And uh, we had to go into a gas to Gaza. Um, basically, we were prepared to go to Gaza, and uh, my officer told me that uh, he's giving me 24 hours to deliver the, the command and then to take the forces and to go and to enter into Gaza. 24 hours, it's a short time. Uh, we prepared the mission. We entered to Gaza, to uh, Omar al Muhtar Street and uh, Talatin al Wahed, Kikar Palestine, the, the uh, circle of Palestine, circle of um, uh, the Fisher uh, circle. And then for almost three months, we spent the time in Gaza. Uh, that was the first uh, mission of the Hamas, it was, till then there were, you know, an organization of Tzedakah, the Chesed, they used to help uh, the Arabs in Gaza, um, it was a, a, a part, a branch of uh, the, the Muslim brothers, they used to help the Arabs, and then all of a sudden from uh, a grace organization, they become, they turn to become a uh, um, a ter terrorism organization. By the way, Rabbi Avadia Yosef, back then, he was the only one that rejected the petition that they have made uh, in the Knesset to be recognized as an Tzedakah Chesed organization, as a Gmach. Uh, that's what they asked the, in the beginning. They were, and then the, the year was... 85 when they when they submitted the petition but you know was able to see it up front and to recognize the potential of uh, that um, terrorism organization anyhow we we went for we were there we spent three months uh, trying to normalize the life in Gaza but uh, and and Baruch Hashem were able to go back to the our Air Force base in the south of Israel when all our soldier nobody got hurt everybody was was okay 
And since I was the, the commander uh, of uh, that mission, then I got, got a reward. And one of the ways that the Israeli Air Force uh, gave me a little present, uh, a little reward for s such a mission was um, by, by flying in a combat airplane over Gaza with my commander, F-16 pilot. Uh, and uh, as we flew, we flew over, we just started, we turned on the, the engine and we got uh, a departure, okay for the departure. We were in the south of Israel and we flew, we started the climb and all of a sudden, we had a problem in the cockpit. Something went wrong. We didn't know exactly where, and the, the, the pilot started a checkup. It's a regular checkup. Is he was going through all the instrument, uh, talking loud uh, with himself. I was listening through the intercom. What he was talking talking with, with my own my, with himself, but. Since I was not a pilot and I didn't know, I was, you know, um, unable to do anything to uh, to save us in such a situation, and uh, I was depend on him uh, for our yeah, life, and and we we started to 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 uh, um, smell a smoke in the cockpit, with smoke, something burning, a rubber burning. We didn't know where uh, and what was burning, and but uh, it was in. We had to report uh, uh, emergency, and uh, Zev told me, "Do not speak uh, in the intercom, because we are in an emergency situation." We were, we were during the climb inside the Air Force base, and uh, he told me, "Do not speak now." Uh, over the uh, intercom because I need to be in a contact with the ground control. Uh, I'm sorry for you. You're not tr well trained for emergency. Just uh, look out the window and turn off the the oxygen. And I turned off the oxygen. I felt like you know I'm, I can't uh, uh, I can't breathe. I started to shake and uh, I had to try to help myself uh, looking out the window and to breathe uh, you know deeply to to uh, comfort myself but anyway he turned back for landing and as we started the landing and we come closer to the fans of the air force base then i saw the fans and something from very deep. I think the fear and 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 the excitement and I don't know the what exactly uh, uh, caused it, but all my memory from my childhood came at once, and uh, uh, and I started to shout uh, in the in the intercom. Uh, what a coincidence! What a co in Hebrew? Okay, what? As a Fuchs, that's the way, what a coincidence. That's the meaning of it. It's a Hebrew slang. And uh, he told me, stop shouting, stop shouting. What happened to you? Stop shouting. Don't interrupt me. I'm in the middle of, in, uh, we are in an emergency landing. And um, just to understand why I lost my 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 sense, why I, I, I lost it and I started to shout. And, there was a reason for it because I realized something. Um, I had a red helmet on my head and all of a sudden the red helmet reminded me a red helmet that I saw in my childhood. I saw the fans. The fans remind me the fans that I saw in my childhood. It was a big sign in a, in a do not touch. And do not take a photography on the fence in a you know red background, and I couldn't see it. There were you know hundred and 
15 meter above the fence but um, I, I just saw a sign but I knew exactly what it's being written in there because my memory memory from my childhood came came back to me I I will tell you exactly what happened uh, I was I was very young I was at the age of nine thir- nine and a half nine, nine and a half we were used to live nearby uh, in the south of Israel in uh, uh, in Ofakim it's a very little little uh, uh, village nearby Be'er Sheva and uh, my father was uh, was sick very sick he had a heart uh, problem and all of a sudden he got a heart attack and he uh, fell on the floor in 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 my house in 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 our house and my mother called for emergency and then uh, i as a child and i was the oldest one my youngest brother was 2 years old i had another sister another brother younger than me uh, one year younger than me and we were standing in, and 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 looking at the situation where the paramedics and the doctors uh, took my my father in the ambulance he was supposed to take a, a open heart surgery which he procrastinated it for almost uh, 10 years because the chances here in Israel for open heart surgery back then in the 70s was you know 50% um uh success and the rest uh three points uh fifty percent not exactly uh success okay that in in a very gentle way that's so it, my father was uh in in a stress he was you know fearing the situation so uh basically um uh my father uh, my mother took, went with my father on the ambulance and and uh, before closing the door she shouted at me uh, um, keep your brothers uh, uh, your brothers uh, you, uh, your brothers um i will send somebody to 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 take care of you but meantime take care of your of your brothers and um so she, the the ambulance was rushing to an open heart surgery probably that's what i understood as a child to Bellinson Hospital nearby Batyam, Hulon, in, in Israel. For a few hours, all the neighbors came uh, came around and to ask what happened, what happened. They saw us crying, uh, and, you know, children, four children crying. And, and then my uh, uh, um, the sister of my father came, and she took all pajamas and... and, and uh, school bags and all we needed and she closed our house and she took us to live at her house and she used to send us to school to the kindergarten every morning for almost two months we were living there expecting for news and every every week once a week my mother used to come from Bellinson she was sitting nearby my father at the very a very very difficult uh, time of him of his and and uh, and uh, she used to come to visit us uh, and the point is that we saw the oldest people whispering and staring at us and 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 we understood that something went wrong here nobody want to tell us as children what's going on and we understood that something very not well going on. But um, two weeks before Shavuot, the holiday, uh, probably the almost the eve of, of, of uh, Shavuot holiday, um, two weeks before, and that's what I remember, um, my uncle told us that my father is feeling well and we can come and visit him. We were very happy to hear good news. We didn't expect it. And then we drove to Bellinson. 
we, we, we were dressing a, a, a very nice clothing to meet our father and to speak with him and to hug him and kiss him, but that was not the case. We were not allowed to enter to the room. It was um, a closed room. We, we were able to stare at my father through uh, a window glass and, and, and we saw the veil, the green veil that the sister uh, or the, the, the or, or I don't know what the doctor uh, pulled and we were able to see my father only through uh, an isolated glass and we started to cry. We don't understand why we cannot speak with him. We saw him with so many uh, instruments on him and, and, and oxygen and and we were very, very young people, young uh, children, so we started to cry. And my uncle told to the doctor, you know, that's it's not going to work. Uh, they're crying, and my father got uh, overexcited. It's not healthy for him. Then the doctor closed the veil, the green veil, and we went back home crying all the way. For it's almost an hour and a half drive back. We were crying uh, because we never saw my father so van so. Um, I'd say vulnerable, so um, um, so weak. So um, we were very surprised to see him with so many instruments on him. He lost weight, and then when when uh, two weeks after it was was the the holiday of Shavuot, um, we got uh, the news. My father. Uh, die from a, a heart attack. Uh, he actually was a good news because he 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 left the hospital. He was about to leave the hospital. He got uh, the the doctors say that he is healthy and he can leave and and he shaved himself and he put a yarmulke on his head and a white shirt for the holiday and that's why my that's what my my mother told us and she went with him with a kit back and uh, with the suits uh, uh, to the to the cab and when she put on the taxi uh, the thing and they drove from uh, the hospital to the south of Israel then my father got a heart attack and the cab driver made a U-turn and uh, in the hospital my father uh, they, they decided that my father died and my mother was a widow at the age of 28, we become uh, orphans at a very young age, and basically it was a very big tra uh, tragedy for the family. Uh, we, we were sent to a dormitories around the country in Israel uh, so that my mother can recover from the tragedy and take care of herself and maybe even get married. It was... Uh, a um, few months after that we were sent to uh, dormitories around uh, the country. And uh, I was sent to the next city nearby, the, the biggest city nearby Ofakim, which was in the south of Israel, Be'er Sheva. I used to get five shekel to uh, five lirot back then to... Uh, to my, the, the door, dormitory, but usually by the end of the week, when my friends took their stuff and 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 took the bus to Ashdod, Kiryat Gat, uh, uh, to Yerucham, Dimona, to the to their cities to to spend the weekend with their family, then I didn't have the money to take the bus back home because we were very in a very economic situation. And I got only one way ticket, only five uh, lire to to arrive to the dormitory, but not to get back from the dormitory. Usually, my mother used to tell me, "I will send you during the week another five lire," but uh, she couldn't many times, so I had to spend the time in the dormitory or uh, nearby the 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 teacher house or in, in the teacher house to be a guest 
of uh, my instructor there or my uh, teacher or my rabbi or and basically to stay the weekend along in the dormitory it's very very um not a, a comfortable situation to to a young fellow at such an, an age and i was i started to hate the place and uh, by the year 1979 it was a summer of 1979 i couldn't stand it no more the dormitory was empty it was friday right after the the lesson in gemara during the morning time at 10:30 everybody left and i was supposed to do another shabbat along only the the big students at uh, at a much larger age were supposed to stay and the, all the children, all the students by my age left home and i had to and i decided at 12 12 30 noon to run to run from the dormitory from bel sheva city to ofakim it was 24 kilometer so i figured okay i'm gonna run i'm gonna run home i want to be just like everybody else i can't stand it no more i hate the place i'm I'm probably going to convince my mother not to stay here no more. Don't. I can't. I hate the place. Uh, I would like to study even in a secular place in Ofakim rather than to be so far in another city that I can't come whenever I, whenever I can. So basically, I decided to leave the place for forever. Not to come no more i and then i started to run i started to run along the road and then i saw the view of the south of israel it's uh south north of israel uh, and and i started to uh, i mean i mean it's in the south of israel it's in the negev but it's in the north i'd say correctly northwest of this of the Negev and I started to run along the road and then I saw the view uh, and I saw in in the horizon very far far away over the view of the desert by the horizon I saw my little village and I figured it's much easier to make a shortcut through the desert I'm probably gonna be able to reach to to Ofakim before Shabbat. It seems to me like much shorter. And I made a shortcut and I started to run instead of the uh, along the road, which I know the place, I started to make a shortcut into the desert. It was a, a childhood thinking to see the you know the airway but not to understand that there is a there is a, a valleys and, and there is a mountain and 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 another uh, another many other uh, interruptions on my way. So I started to run, and then I lost after uh, forty minutes running, fifty minutes running. I don't really recall. I lost my way, and I started to run. Where I don't know where is Bel Sheva, uh, the city was not behind uh, behind me, and I couldn't see no more of Akim, and I started to climb to a, a higher place to see the view, but I was surrender with the desert. And then I decide, okay, I'm gonna not gonna change the course. I'm I'm gonna go on the way I think, because soon I probably gonna see of Akim in my view again. And I started to to run, and then I r- reached a place where I saw it seems like a European um, camp in the Second World War, just like Auschwitz. That's what that the sensation that I that I felt back then. I saw 
big fans with a, um, an electric uh, wire in the middle of it. And uh, then I, I was not sure where I was running no more because I thought to myself, maybe I, I, ran, to, I, I ran to another place and maybe I'm in the border of Israel somewhere in the south where I don't know. But I, I was able to reach to the place. And I knew that I cannot climb over the fence straight the way I thought. So I figured I'm going to run along the fence. But the fence was very, very long. And I started to feel losing it, losing the strength of my body, feeling weakness and started to shake. And uh, I didn't have water. And uh, I realized that I'm about to, to fend. I was running along the fan. And then I stood. Uh, I saw a tower, the garden tower. And I started to shout to the garden tower. Maybe somebody, maybe a guard is in there. And maybe he's going he gonna to throw at me a, a content or something to drink some water. So I started to, to, to shout, water, water. But nobody was able to, I didn't see anybody responding. I saw the window. There was no, not even a shadow of a garden. So I was very disappointed. And I started to, instead of running to walk, I was very exhausted. But every kilometer was another garden tower over the, the fence. And then I... I, I was able to walk another another kilometer, and I stood nearby the the tower, the 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 next tower, and I started to shout, and I felt that I'm really fainting, and I started to be very dizzy, and all the world started to turn around me, and nobody was there, and nobody was able to hear my 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 voice and i fainted on the ground and i don't know how long was it but uh, a combat airplane making his uh, um, turning into a, a landing he started the process of landing and the noise was so strong he was you know uh, uh landing we started the process of landing and when he arrived to approximately 200 meter above me, it was so noisy and so frightening that I woke up, I stood, I put my hand on my ears, and I was staring at the airplane, at the combat airplane. I saw the helmet, was a red helmet of the pilot. I saw the cockpit. He probably turned off the engine, and he already put the, the flaps uh, down for uh, it's the process of, of landing. And, and he went over the fence, and I saw the touchdown, but it was exactly when the Shabbat was entering. I saw the dark, darkness coming, and I saw the sunset, sunset the, last, the least light possible, uh coming and 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 I realized that in a few minutes I'm gonna be in the middle of the desert being caught by the night by Shabbat in a place where I don't know where I am on the map I was uh, very very chasar oni very vulnerable but I didn't know my way I didn't know where to go and and how and what to do but I realized that the two towers that I passed through them and I was running through and trying, there were abundance. So no, nobody was there. And I figured, okay, let's go on. Maybe in, in the next tower, somebody will be here, there. And I'm, I'm not supposed to think home no more. I'm supposed to think water and somebody that will call for for help SOS that's what I was that I, that I what I was keeping in my mind and I started to move on 
And then I fell to the ground, probably after maybe 50 meter, 100 meter, and I couldn't wake up. I woke up in the middle of the night. It was almost, I guess, 2 o'clock in the morning when I woke up. 2 o'clock in the morning, waking up and hearing the noises of the, all the animals of, in the desert. I, I heard many, many frightening noise, noises, but I was in the middle of the dark, darkness. I was looking for light, and I saw a tenth of kilometers, very small little lights. I was in the middle of the wilderness. And I realized that I'm, I'm lost. I started to shout because I heard noises that was very frightening to me. And I started to shout, Atsilu, Atsilu, which is an SOS calling for help. Nobody was able to listen, not the Bedouin, and not, I figured it's an Air Force base. Maybe, maybe soldiers will hear my voice. Maybe someone, maybe the Bedouins, I saw some tents there and some, but nobody was able to to hear my voice. And then I decided, I was at, at the age of 14 and a half, and I figured, okay, then I'm probably not going to live no more. It's nobody going to be able to help me here. I'm very far away from any city, and I put my 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 hand on my on my eyes and I shouted Shema Israel and I figured I'm not gonna close my eyes I, if I'm gonna close my eyes I'm probably gonna die and and I was starting to fight my my to keep my eyes open but I couldn't it was a sand in my eyes and I and I was very dizzy and very weak and my eyes got of course obviously got closed. I woke up maybe half an hour after. I don't know. I didn't have a, a watch on my my hand. But I approximately that was my feeling like if if I if I was there on the ground like almost a half an hour. And then I saw beams of light. Beams of light from over the fence toward me. I was the only the only lightened spot over the fence. All the lights were lightning at me, and I was—I uh, couldn't do, see anything. I just—I saw many, many, many uh, lights at me, and then I heard somebody from very close, from over the fence, but he commanded the soldiers that were there in a position. Note not to shout, not to shout, because it's a, it's a child. Don't shout. I was probably in the middle of their, of the, uh, well, they, they, they put their gun toward me. They were prepared to, to hear the command from their officer, fire and to sh- shout and to shoot. But, uh, well, I, I guess the, the officer recognized a, a child there, and and then he told them, "Don't shout." And uh, I was able to raise my my head. I was very weak, and I I was whispering, "Water, water!" And he 